Okay, welcome to Mu... Where, where are we? Let's try... <laughs> okay, let's try again. First game of the season for me, so I'm a little bit out of practice. It's Musashino Athletic Stadium, the home of the newly formed Tokyo Musashino United for the opening weekend of the Japan Football League, which is the fourth tier of Japanese football. Last season, uh, in October, I came here when this club was called Tokyo Musashino City. But um, earlier this year, there was a shock announcement that they were merging with Tokyo United, who play in the Kanto Soccer League Division 1, which is one level below this league. And the newly formed team became Tokyo Musashino United, uh, a combination of Tokyo Musashino City and Tokyo United. Tokyo United will also continue in the Kanto Soccer League Division 1, but as an amateur team. Uh, this team, though, I imagine in the future will be targeting a place in the J-League because the Japan Football League is just one step below J3 so you can get promoted out of this league into the J-League. So in 2019 it looks like Tokyo Musashino City were going to be the J-League's next club from Tokyo. At the moment you've got FC Tokyo, Tokyo Verdi and uh, Machida Zelvia in the J-League as Tokyo's teams. But um, this club looked like they were going to join them. They were in the top four in 2019. They had a J-League license. They were meeting all of the attendance requirements and other requirements to achieve J-League status. But they announced towards the end of the year that they were not going to go for the J-League due to attendance issues. Um, then in 2020, they announced that due to financial issues, they were going to give up their J-League 100 year plan status. J-League 100 year plan status is what you need if you want to join the J-League. But the club gave up their status um, and then it looked like the club were going to revert to their former corporate identity. They were formerly known as the Yokogawa Electric and it seemed like they were going to yeah, become a corporate side again. But then earlier this year, a kind of shock announcement that they were merging with Tokyo United to become Tokyo Musashino United. Um, and yeah, it's I think a positive move. It's probably good for Tokyo United too to, to join this club. There are quite a few clubs in the non-league from Tokyo, so I think um, merging is not such a bad idea in, this, in that sense. But whether or not they're going to be able to achieve uh, the J-League 100 year plan status is unclear. Uh, when I came here last year, there were nearly a thousand people here for the game, which I thought was really impressive. I'll give you an update later on how many come today, um, because I think that will be a, a quite a good sign to how popular this merger is, if it's alienated any of the fans or not. Um, we'll see soon. But um, it could be exciting, I think. It could be a really good move. I hope it works out, because I do think this club does have the fan base to get into the J-League. Um, the stadium is, I think, lovely. It's not the biggest stadium, but you can sit on the grass bank and relax. Probably it's okay for J3. I don't think it's going to be good enough to go any higher than that. And the location is really good. It's in Mitaka, which is one of my favorite parts of Tokyo. It's near Kichijoji, which has Ino Kashura Park. Also the Ghibli Museum is in Mitaka. So yeah, it's a really good place. I recommend visiting here if you're in Tokyo. So yeah, it's, really, it's gonna be a really fascinating match, I think. It's a new identity for the club, a fresh start in a way. Um, so yeah, it's, um, it's gonna be really interesting. Today's opposition is Reindemir Aomori from Aomori in Tohoku, in the north of Japan. Reindemir Aomori, um, for me, have the, one of the best uh, club badges in world football. It's absolutely cool, brilliant. I think it's um, the image, it's from one of the festivals that they have in Aomori. It's very famous for a, a traditional festival they have, and the badge represents that, and it's very, very cool. Um, I believe they have a J-League license. If I'm wrong, I'll put that on the screen. Um, so yeah, they're another team that's quite ambitious at this level. Last time I came here, uh, last season, we watched uh, Tokyo Musashino City against Iwaki FC. And Iwaki FC are very, very ambitious. Um, this league is very strange though, you've got the ambitious teams like Iwaki, and you've also got teams like, uh, corporate teams like Honda FC, Honda Lock, uh, teams like that, who are basically just corporate teams who still compete at this level, but obviously they're not eligible for promotion to the J-League because corporate teams are not allowed in the professional divisions in Japan. As for a prediction for today's game, 
Um, yeah, I when I came here last year to watch Tokyo Miss National City, they were really the team were quite physical, quite direct, and they played Iwaki FC that day, who were a more sort of a technical side. But the sort of um, I guess experience at this level uh, from Miss National City really paid off, and they looked like they knew what they were doing. They had a very clear game plan. I think today that it could be maybe two quite similar teams. Um, I think Remy and Almadi have been at this level for quite a while. So I'm going to say 2-2 two, two for today's game. Uh, yeah, based on not much, but I think that will be what the result will be today. This season as well, I'm going to tell you how much I paid for my tickets because uh, I get quite a few comments asking how much it costs to watch football in Japan. So today, bear in mind, this is only the Japan Football League, the fourth tier one step below the J-League, basically a non-professional league. Um, I paid 800 yen for my ticket, I bought it in advance. I'll put the conversion rate on the screen. So uh, I think it's a really good price actually, I think that's not too bad um, for a football game in Tokyo. And of course it's still Covid times, um, but of course we're very lucky here, we can still come to games. Restrictions in place of course, like masks and stuff, but um, one cool thing today I'll show you. Got even a pack of JFL hand wipes, uh, which is really cool. I like this a lot. I think, yeah, this is really good. There are attendance restrictions in place as well, but I don't think they really affect football at this level because um, the crowds are never that big anyway, really. So um, in the J League, in in the Greater Tokyo area, it's uh, the attendance cap is 5,000 fans. Today, I don't know, we're not going to get that many. We're going to get like maybe. Yeah, up to most like maybe 800 I guess, but it's looking pretty sparse at the moment, maybe even less than that. But I'll let you know the attendance figures when they're announced later. Okay, so that was Tokyo Misashino United 2, Rainmere Aomori 2. I think you'll find that my prediction was 100% correct. So I'm going to say 2-2 two, two for today's game. So I'm wearing a Tokyo Misashino City shirt. Um, and at the match, I bought a scarf of the rebranded club. So this is the Tokyo Misashino United. Um, yep, this is the new badge and the new colours. So quite a difference in style and identity for the club. So at this game, um, the attendance was 670. Um, to put that into context, the last time I went to watch the club, Tokyo Musashi North City, the attendance for that game was 907. So on the face of it, it sounds like there's been a big drop off in fans. But when I went to that game, in October last year, there were no restrictions on away fans, so Iwaki FC did bring quite a lot of uh, travelling support, which did boost the attendance quite a lot. 
So on the face of it, um, from what I can gather in this match, there hasn't been a huge difference in attendance if you take into account the absent away fans. So I don't think this merger between Tokyo International City and Tokyo United has alienated any of the fans um, in any sort of major way. So that's really good. That's good to see. And that stadium is really one of my favourites. Um, I love sitting on the grass bank. It's just such a really relaxing place to watch football. The old scoreboard is fantastic. I really like that they have to change it manually. <laughs> That's um, a really nice touch. Very, yeah, very um, adds a bit of charm to the match day experience, I think. The stand is cool as well. If you sit on the grass bank, you look across the pitch, there's that really big uh, sort of sports complex behind the stand, which is a very cool building. So yeah, really nice stadium in a very nice part of Tokyo. So as for the merger between Tokyo International City and Tokyo United, as I mentioned at the start of the video, Tokyo United are still continuing as a fully amateur club in Kanto Soccer League Division 1, but of course are also heavily involved uh, in this collaboration with the Tokyo Musashino United team. On the club website, it's um, basically highlighting the fact that this is primarily a community club. It's um, There's no mention of them at the moment applying for J-League 100 year plan status. So for the time being, it seems more like a club that is uh, going to be aiming to you know be a club for the community, for young people to get involved in football. They're also using the slogan Heart of Tokyo because Musashino City is kind of to the west of the capital. Tokyo United come from Bunkyo Ward, so that's a very central area of Tokyo. So this, co this collaboration brings together two different parts of the city. So it's quite cool in that respect. It's, um, yeah, bringing together two very different parts of the city, which is uh, very interesting. And as for the future, an interesting thing is that if you look on Tokyo United's website, they do mention in their club profile and kind of club introduction that they do want to become a J-League club in the future. So you can only assume at the moment, but it does seem like this merger, this collaboration with Tokyo Musashino is a way to kind of bring them closer to joining the J-League because the JFL, of course, is only one step below the J-League and it would make it easier if this club is um, combined. It makes it much easier for them to make the step up to professional football. Currently, there are only two teams in Tokyo that have 100-year plan status to join the J-League. That is uh, Kuriason Shinjuku, who play in Kanto Soccer League Division 1, and Nankatsu SC, who play in Kanto Soccer League Division 2. Kanto uh, Soccer League makes up the regionalized steps 5 and 6 of the Japanese football pyramid. So it's, um, yeah, it's technically if you're in the Kanto Soccer League Division 1, you are two promotions away from reaching the J League if you have all of the required uh, licenses and you're meeting all your sort of targets to acquire the. Yeah, license for promotion. So let me know what you think about the Tokyo Musashino United club and the match experience and their stadium. And of course, as always, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like. And if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing for more footballs about for more footballs <laughs> for more videos about all things Japanese football. Uh, thank you for watching, and I'll be back again soon.